Hello again everybody, welcome back to my channel. You are watching with Wombat yet once again and man, I just I'm never gonna never gonna get that intro right, am I? Well, let's uh let's move past that, past all the awkwardness and all the weirdness and just dive right into what we're here for. We're here for another reaction video and this time we're gonna go back to Star Trek Lower Decks. That's right, our new favorite animated half hour Star Trek based sitcom aimed at adults. <clears throat> That's Lower Decks. If I remember right, last time the episode was, or at least it seemed to me to be very character heavy, not not too focused on, on the laughs, which was, I think I had a mixed reaction to it at the time, but you know, the more I think about it, just the more impressed I am with it. The more that it felt surprisingly like like regular Trek. Uh, with, with, I mean, obviously it wasn't. There was still, there was still the Lower Decks elements to it, but it was a quality episode as it as it comes to to character growth, and I'm wondering now how uh, what we're what we're in for this time. I don't really have too much to say. Uh, I I was very moved by by Tendi's journey in the last episode. She she might be the the character with the most emotional potential. Now that's maybe not fair because. I haven't seen what they're going to do with some of these other characters yet, but I think some of these other characters have such strong qualities that if they evolve out of those qualities into something else, like you're you're changing the fundamental nature of the character, and that's that's part of the risk, I guess, in 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 telling a story that's this kind of comedy, where the main characters, uh, a lot of the, the the humor, comes directly from that primary quality of theirs. So like. Boimler's main source of, of humor, the, I th at least for me anyway, the reason that I find him so funny is because of his his insecure neuroticism that he wears on his sleeve, you know. And if that changes, if he becomes, if, if he stays the bold Boimler or if he continues to evolve into more bold Boimler than we saw in the last episode even, then, you know, it, he'll be a different character. And I'm not saying that he can't be funny anymore like that. I'm just saying that he'll be a different character but I guess that's okay. That's fine. Um, Rutherford, I just don't know enough to even even begin to... I can't even evaluate his, his, his character. Uh, like, if I were if someone were to ask me what Rutherford, Rutherford is like, I, I don't know what I would be able to say. He's friendly, he, he's relaxed, but only sometimes, because I think I've seen him, he, he, he can be a little neurotic too. He's, he's almost a blending of like Tendi and Boimler. You know, that's why I was saying in, in the last reaction video that we're really due for a Rutherford-centric episode. Mariner, again, she's like a huge question mark because I feel like her character has actually gone on more than one character arc. She started out as, you know, rogue, a scoundrel. Uh, an outrageous Okana, if you will, but at some point she she decided to get a little bit more serious about her career, and then she went back into the other direction again. And I'm not sure where she is now. I mean, she stated to her mother, you know, in the first episode of, of this season that she she did want to get more serious about it. She wanted to make her mother proud, and that's why. That's why she's trying so hard to to please Ransom and to follow Ransom's orders. But so I don't know where it's going to go there with her. I don't have a whole lot more to say, so why don't we just dive right into it? Uh, we are going to get started now. Star Trek: Lower Deck, Season Three, Episode Four: Room for Growth. Splash screen. Yes, that is the Cerritos. And no, I haven't checked yet uh, if that's the Enterprise and the Strange New Worlds. Um, you know, splash. Poopy. Okay, now what? Oh, it's look, it's a season here. seven mask. Like yeah, for real. Masks. No, no, no. No, I didn't have a problem with this episode, but I know that a lot of people really hated this episode. Super fun to be in the action. I just tuned that. Oh. <laughs> She, uh, Minuki, yeah, trans just transformed his crystal violin into, is that a Horgon or something? I don't know. You know, I've seen the, the opening credits to Lower Decks so often, and yet it seems like every time I watch it, I notice something new. And right now, all I can think is, the Cerritos, the design of the Cerritos isn't nearly as dumb as I as I once thought it was. Um, it's, it's actually really grown on me. I mean, it's still... It's no Enterprise, of course, but I used to think it was 
it was a joke you know the design before obviously it's a starfleet design still but like i felt like it was just too goofy to look at but it has really really grown on me now once again the cerritos was partially transformed into a <laughs> temple while i was inhabited by the spirit of manuki systems and the ship is almost clear of the crazy mess you made uh that manuki yes of course made. manuki right 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 yeah of course mm -hmm. sorry uh, dr tan has raised some concerns lieutenant commander okay, i'm gonna Her remember tana's name this episode you are a f***ing <laughs> pile of stress i'm fine the <laughs> Breakdown is exactly why that is hilarious. I was ready for the most relaxing mandatory vacation of their lives. To be honest, I, I could actually use a mandatory vacation too because, like, they left to my own devices. I don't think I'm ever going to actually make time for vacation before the year ends. It'll be super easy. <gasps> Delta ships. <laughs> access a terminal on deck now. Oh, Delta ships the worst. They should all just join the Maquis. <laughs> well, those jerks figured out how to rig the lottery. That's a. Oh, that's Doctor Crusher's future starship or whatever. Their offerings. For the more deviant among you, we also have. I don't know. She kind of looks no like judgment. she's dying there. Our Computer, deactivate safety protocol. Uh. <laughs> uh, what are we doing? The usual. We off these feds, and once our blood's pumping. I. Okay. Just shoot me instead. Still the ship beating us to that terminal. They better. Plus, when parts of the ship almost nobody gets to see. Uh. uh where is that? Cool. Why do we even have a swamp on board? Is it like. We're under the hydro to garden. Like, instead of an arboretum, they have a swamp? Ah, oh, nope, they the also have an arboretum. Scramble. His throat slid by his mistress. Okay, that's. See, uh, I, I knew it as soon as I said it last time. That's like. No, that's. Obviously, it's not Bordas. But it should have been a Tamarian. I should have guessed that right away. Is it safe for us to be breathing that? Oh, well, I know Orions are immune to its hallucinogenic. I have completely forgotten that Tendi's an Orion. Goddamn sea creature! creature. <laughs> My head. I can I taste, taste sounds. Taste. What? We have to get out of here. We have to get out of here. I said, go! go. <laughs> wow. Isn't this like the chamber where Kirk from Star Trek Into Darkness died? I feel so free to do this with Spoiler alert. Small asteroid cluster is approaching. What we have a deflector for. Uh-oh. <gasps> what the Uh Okay. Okay. Auntie. The wool of Manny Petties is renowned across the quad. Not a single yellow wristband in the bunch. They ah, tinkered with it. Good, Love the manicure. Oh, just the petties fine. Toes. Uh -huh. uh, no thanks. What's Not going on me. here? Did you slide a cucumber slice under your wristband to the direct attack? No, my engineers don't respect me. That's oh, not boy. true. The worst captain in the whole freaking fleet of total show. <gasps> Am I amusing you? <laughs> Black Bander. This woman is under incredible stress. She hasn't recently been possessed by any ancient artifacts, has she? Uh, no. Uh. Engineers, all of them, all of them are all goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jordy could relax. No, no, how? Yeah, he, he did the Sherlock Holmes thing with Data. If that's what the captain needs, then we need to figure out a way to stop engineering. Sir, I think I know what we shouldn't do. <laughs> I, I don't know why I'm laughing so hard. Remember when Ransom got turned into a caveman and they locked him in the cafeteria? Mm. Ah, Charles. But did you know he still has the doll? Oh. We have engineered a machine. That removes <laughs> stress! You built this? Captain, how do you feel? Oh, it was better than a thousand massages combined! I mean, what I would give to spend some time in a machine like that. I guess it'll take someone bold to find out. Boimler, no, that's... No, don't, no, please, don't let that be a new catchphrase. The bold Boimler is way better. Boimler thing, it is not sustainable. Be lower deckers for so long. I mean, in no time, Tendy's gonna be a bridge officer. I'll probably get drummed out of Starfleet for calling <laughs> Ransom a piece of shit. <laughs> and Boimler, you'll be dead because of the whole thing. <laughs> Computer, 35 churros in an unmarked paper bag. Hot. Okay, so that's... All right, I was, I was thinking it was something dirty. That's not so bad. 
Okay, so that's the end of the episode, but actually I'm going to go back because I, I'm looking at some of these other ships in orbit. Yeah, so like, okay, I, I already pointed out that the, the one with the spherical primary hull is like uh, Dr. Crusher's ship from, from the episode uh, All Good Things, you know, where they go to the future. The one in the middle, it's not like an exact comparison, but it reminds me a lot of, and this is my inner nerd coming out, reminds me a lot of the, uh, the the escort frigates, or even the assault frigates from Star Wars. Sort of looks like that. But the one that really fascinated me was the one, well, now all the way on the right. And for some reason, I, I think about the Excalibur. I think that's the name of the ship. No. Is it Excalibur? The ship from um, Crusade, the Babylon 5 spinoff. It makes me think of that. I mean, obviously, it doesn't have, like, the three really super long wings. But I feel like the rest of the ship, the way it's shaped, the way the forward section is shaped and the bag is a lot like... And, and the Dove, I, I, I have no real comparison for the Dove. Except, like, the forward section of the Dove makes me think about that pleasure barge from uh, the Fifth Element, uh, if you remember. Um, but only the forward part of it. The back of it doesn't... Okay, wait, no, no, now the back of it, where the drive is, not the pylons. The pylons don't look like anything, I don't think. But the back end of that ship makes me think of the, I might mispronounce this, the Mana G1 ship, the, the big egg-shaped ship. It kind of looks a little bit like that. I mean, I know, like, the show is full of Easter eggs, but I'm wondering if I'm anywhere in the the, the, the right vicinity for some of these. I'm sure that the, the purple light ship is a, it's a callback to Crusher ship. Maybe the one on the right is a stretch to make it a Babylon 5 comparison. And probably the one in the middle is a big stretch to make it a Star Wars comparison. But yeah, that's what I think. And, and I'm sorry, I just had to go back and look at it because it was bugging me that I felt like I really... I thought maybe I was seeing something there. Maybe I'm not. So, all right, I'm going to say something controversial here. I think that this was not one of their better episodes. I enjoyed it, as, of course, I enjoy all Lower Decks. But I didn't really love it. And I can't even necessarily say it was a great character episode either because it didn't really focus on any one character. There really wasn't much of an arc for anybody. I almost wanted to say, like, Captain Freeman kind of had an arc. But then when the engineers brought in their de-stressing machine, rather than have her learn to deal with her stress or rather than have the crew, like, help her figure it out, they just dropped her into that machine. That was that. So... No, not really a, a character episode for Freeman or Rutherford, because Rutherford, with the exception of the opening scene in the uh, in the dorm room, he really falls into the background along with the rest of the engineers. So, no, we haven't gotten our Rutherford episode yet. At least I hope we haven't. I hope they're not counting this as a Rutherford episode. And then we have, like, the, the big three, you know, uh, Mariner, Boimler, and Tendi. And just some you know, Homer's Odyssey inspired type journey. I'm not saying that anything was a comparison directly to anything else in the Odyssey, but it was that kind of a trip, you know, that took way longer than it needed to. And they faced a variety of challenges. I don't know. I feel like some of the moments in this were just so random, even for lower decks, like too random. Like, like when they were in that, I guess the deflector array or whatever and the asteroids are coming along and ransom just says crank up the deflector like why just to create the that little mini crisis that they had to that 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 our three had to get through get past i mean they could have engineered any pun they could have created any crisis really but they went with that instead not really uh wasn't really feeling it that was that was a weird choice i thought and then there, there's me laughing at some of the, like the the weird, the sillier stuff. Like when I can't remember the chief engineer's name, uh, but um, when he slaps Shax, not once but twice, and like the second slap was, I think it was like a little bitty clip on the uh, the trailer for season three way back when, uh, and I thought it was funny then too, but like it was so quick that I didn't really get it. I got it here, and I just it just was too hilarious. For, for, for me for whatever reason <laughs> there were a couple other I guess you could say laugh laugh out loud moments but I don't really remember I think Rutherford was the focus of one of them and that was cool room for growth huh that's the name of the episode right I didn't oh right the pun I was gonna say like I didn't I, I don't get the sim symbolism of the 
episode title. I get the pun, of course, because it's the room that triggers this journey. But beyond that, I, I don't know. I, I just didn't see anybody growing. I, I didn't see the room for growth either. You know, unless you want to say like, oh, well, maybe the engineers uh, grew a little bit because they they self-realized. You know, they, they came to this understanding that for them, kind of work is a kind of relaxation, which I think we already knew. I think we knew that within the first 10 seconds of them arriving on the Dove, we knew that this was their solution. And and I guess in that sense, it was too predictable. Maybe that's also part of the problem. It's like this episode was predictable it played out in a very predictable way we knew that our three were were for whatever reason not going to get the room or not even going to try to go for the room especially when they realized that they wouldn't necessarily be lower deckers anymore living on deck one and we knew that the engineers were never really going to relax i i I was hoping for a little uh, things to go a little against expectation and i don't think i got that And, and that's that's okay. I mean, trying to trying to outguess your audience is a really tricky job for a writer. I get it, but uh, that doesn't mean that I love it either. But anyway, it's still a great way to end the week, and this is the end of the week for me. It's Friday night, and this is perfect way for me to wrap up a very long, busy, stressful week. No, my time management has not really improved. But I, well, okay, maybe like a little bit. Like it's incrementally getting a little bit better while also getting even busier. So yeah, thank you, Lower Decks, for helping me, for helping me relax and dump some stress. Way to go with that. Uh, and I hope you all enjoyed my reaction video. I hope that it helped you also uh, relax and, and release some stress watching Wombat do the Wombat thing. Please hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll catch you all next week with undoubtedly another episode from Lower Decks. Have a great evening.